So, Laura, are you ready for your demo? Absolutely. Thank okay, you very that's much. great. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us. Um, sorry you can't see me at the moment and I'm being rather unsociable, but Paul is shortly going to share his screen with you um, and go over some product, some specific kind of product detail. So Exclaimer have an email signature solution um, which attaches to G Suite and also Office 365. Um, we've got over 75 million users worldwide now um, that apply our signatures. Um, it adds a really great contribution to a company when you look at conformity and aligning. Um, so what's, what our customers really love about us is that the signature obviously means that everybody has exactly the same send out, whether it be from kind of obviously your PC or other devices such as tablets um, and mobile phones. The, you know, the company is conformed um, and every, every signature that goes out pulls attributes from your directory, the live directory, um, to ensure that those, you know, those attributes are the same every time. They're not getting amended per signature um, or by the end users themselves so that every individual person um, using those signatures will um will be having you know will be sending the same messaging out the same company branding the same company awareness um there's quite a nice few bits everything okay there's quite a nice few um other extra features to the signatures that are really quite beneficial to companies um so paul's just popping a slide up on your screen now these are kind of what we call the edible um, editable parts of the signature um, and again so I just mentioned that you have a directory that all this data pulls from um, so the G Suite directory for G Suite and of course that would be um, the Active Directory if it was Microsoft um, but that's where this data is, data is taken from so if we start from number one which is those details those attributes which is an email telephone number and web address um, that can be set and can be changed depending on the department of the company perhaps. So for instance, if you had an IT department within the company um, and they wanted the same telephone number for everybody to call through to, then you could ensure that the IT signatures all had the IT phone number in there and that was all that came through. However, you might then to want also segregate that so that there'd be an upper level so any senior managers um, could include their direct dial. Um, on their own emails and that got separated out even further. Um, over to the left of that you've got James Green, his position and the company and the logo and again that might be, you might do that by department, you might do that by region. Um, a really good example of this is an, an estate agent um, and, and bear in mind the other parts of that signature now with the banner um, and the social media an estate agent, for instance, would want to ensure that they had a regional link um, to their sites that, you know, was localised as opposed to the same link for all. Therefore, they would want to maybe customise by office um, as opposed to just putting something for the whole of the sales team or the whole of the marketing team. So they might not only have a sales breakdown and a marketing breakdown, um, but then further spread that out by regions. And therefore have, you know, perhaps different logos associated and things too. Um, and then underneath that you have a banner. Um, and of course, the, the banner may or may not be useful to, for different departments in the company. One thing we have just done is um, we've added UTM parameters, um, which means that usually using Google Analytics, um, you can track the click-throughs from the signature and you can apply that to either perhaps the banner or the social media icons. Um, so that as a user, you can you can really kind of, you know, measure what's coming through and measure how those leads are coming through and what activity is being caused from those promotional parts of your signature. Um, and then last but not least, of course, you've got the, the disclaimer underneath and the disclaimer is just the conformity for the company. Obviously, that data protection um, and that protection on the fact of all you, everything going through, you're carrying that same disclaimer in terms of what the content is. Um, for the, the person receiving, the recipient. Um, so I will let you go over to Paul for the interesting bit. Paul is one of our product specialists, um, our senior product specialist, and he's going to just show you what the tool is, how it works, how simple it is, and, and how really versatile it is. It really, 
it really is super easy to use and and again what customers love is that it's set it's not it's not an email headache you've just solved a lot of problems where people have users editing signatures and and it looks different from depending from where the signature is coming from internally at the company whereas this brings it all together and it's all localized in one place so it really is you know super easy for companies to use set up and get running um so paul i will hand over to you to run through the tool with everybody perfect okay thank you um i'm just going to drag across my web browser here um as ex as uh, laura was explaining there the whole purpose of exclaimer cloud is to help centrally manage your email signatures um, one of the nice things about using exclaimer is that it will work across all devices as well so it doesn't just have to be gmail on the web and you might well be used to seeing this sort of interface in your uh, your gmail um uh, at the moment when you compose a new message you would have your signature there this time i'm actually injecting that signature using the uh, design that i've created within the exclaimer cloud portal but the nice thing about this is i can also get my signature applied when i'm sending from any device as long as that email goes through the google platform so that does include android devices of course iphones um, gmail on the web tablets, Mac, PC, it really doesn't matter as long as you're sending via Google. It's an easy to use drag and drop uh, web-based interface as well. So there's no software to download and install. It's hosted online at our website, which is portal.exclaimer.com. And there is a 14 day free trial accessible to everyone as well. Once you're signed in, um, like I said, there's no code to worry about here. You will see this blue background and a button to start creating your signatures. I have a few laid out here at the moment, just a standard signature, a more marketing focused signature, and one with user profile photos as well, which is quite a nice feature. You could add dynamic information that changes based on the sender, but the photo can also change. I've got a couple of folders down here as well. So if I did want to categorize the signatures into folders, I've got one for marketing. I've got a folder for my older archived signatures as well, rather than deleting them, I'm just moving them to a separate location to be used in the future. Now, if I hit new signature, it takes me straight into the portal to start creating the uh, the design. And I have a few different uh, uh, templates built in, but it's not just template driven. If you did want to start from an empty template, you certainly can and build out any signature design you like. In this case, I'm just going to choose a very basic exclaimer signature. And in here, you'll see the editors split into three different sections. The left hand side is simply a toolbox of items that you might use within the signature. The middle section is your drag and drop interface. And the right hand side over here is a preview of what it will look like in the message body. So what I could do here as an example, we might be adding a marketing banner. So I'll come down to images and icons. I'll click and drag the banner section and I can move that to pretty much wherever I like in the signature. I'm going to add it just below the social media icons. And you can either link to images stored on your website or upload them directly from your PC. And in my case, I'm going to add our Watch Our Signature Software Webinars banner. A properties box pops up to help me add further customization. And like Laura was saying earlier, I might want to integrate this with Google Analytics. So I might be pasting in a hyperlink either directly to my website or a hyperlink generated within Google's campaign builder tool with those UTM parameters set. That way I can track how many people are clicking through on that banner and going through to the landing pages or to my social media pages. And the information here is dynamic. So don't think you have to come in here and create an individual signature, one for each person in the company. You certainly could create an entire signature and apply it to different members of the organization or different teams. So that could be one for sales, one for IT, one for marketing, perhaps one for the entire company. It's really up to you. If I wanted to, I could come in here and I've got full control over fonts, colors, and sizes as well. I could come in and say, okay, this is going to be perhaps Calibri, and perhaps it's going to be size 12. And then I can use the color picker to choose colors as well, and it does accept hex codes. So if you're used to graphic design and you have certain hex codes in your branding, you can use that there as well. Like Laura was saying, we can pull across information. She had uh, James Green's uh, profile pop up on the PowerPoint presentation. In here, instead of typing my name, it is pulling across my name, of course, in the preview, but I'm taking 
the name from Google, uh, the job title from Google, the organization name as well. It's all coming straight from the G Suite directory of information. There's nowhere in Exclaimer that you need to come and populate everyone's details. It's information you already have at hand right within Google. Outside of that, once you're happy with your template, you can come back to the main screen where you'll see a general overview and you can work through each of the options when you hover over and go through assigning the signatures to users. So you might want to apply to everyone in the company or perhaps members of groups, like I was saying, the sales or the marketing team, depending on your groups within G Suite. You can also come in here and select different recipients. So if you wanted the ability to have different signatures when sending internally and externally, you certainly could or you could have the same signature regardless of who you're sending to. You'll be able to come in here and also decide if you wanted to use either the server side or the client side, or perhaps a combination of both. And just to give you an idea of what those are, client side delivers the signature directly into Gmail on the web. It's just Gmail on the web on its own. Whereas server side will apply across all devices, mobiles, Macs, tablets, and PCs as well. And then as another uh, final quick point, I know we're a bit short on time, you can schedule these signatures to start and stop automatically based on time and date. So if you did have those marketing campaigns, you could say, well, this is going to start automatically on maybe the 1st of March. Perhaps you're attending an event or have a promotion running. It could start at midnight. That will then end automatically at the end of March. And we could say midnight to midnight. And after that, have a different signature with a different campaign up and running and pre-schedule them throughout the year. Once you're happy with your design, as long as that disabled banner's disappeared, which it should have done as soon as you've selected either client or server side, that's live immediately. Um, and it's uh, consistent across devices, but across the organization as well. Any questions I can answer from anyone at all? So any questions in the room? My question would be, um, as it is a separate service that I use in order to configure my, my um, setup for the signature, uh, are there any GDPR topics that customers need to be aware of? It's a, it's a very good question. Now, being a UK-based company, we have to uh, comply with GDPR. We have our GDPR statement on the website. Um, we are also ISO accredited. and We hold an ISO 27001 accreditation for data security. Um, we have a full security document that anyone uh, can request from us, and we'll, we'll gladly send that out. Um, we do comply with GDPR. We don't store the emails to disk either, and nobody here at Exclaimer has access to go in and read the content of the email at all. Um, it is fully encrypted as it passes through both Exclaimer and back to Google, of course. Um, just let us know if you would like a copy of that and we can get that sent out to you. And um, if anyone would like a, a full-on sort of one-to-one -one demo as well, uh, just uh, feel free to arrange that uh, with Laura directly and she'll be able to, to book you in with one of the product specialist team. Okay, great. So I have two additional questions. Uh, basically. Of course. One other question would be, uh, who do you normally talk to? So is it more like marketing asking for something or is it IT or corporate communications? or? It's, a, it's actually a combination of both. So um, a lot more recently, it's, it's, a very, it's very heavily focused uh, around the marketing team. Uh, a lot of people not just trying to get consistent signatures, which has previously been an IT uh, role and an IT focused uh, solution. It's now a marketing tool. You consider the amount of emails you're sending every day. Um, and if you're not having a signature on there, not advertising your events or promotions, you're missing out on pretty much free advertising um, times by the number of emails you're sending and the number of users in the company. So it has all of a sudden become a very big uh, focus on the marketing teams, which is why we've gone for a more simplistic drag and drop interface and try to make it as uh, least technical as possible. Okay. Uh, one last question, I guess this question has to come, is uh, can you give us an idea about your pricing model? That one I will hand back over to Laura for. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you it's a subscription-based model, um, priced per user per month, but for specifics, Laura, are you able to rejoin? 
Yeah, of course. That's, and we'd be happy to go into detail. So um, retail off the top of my head, which is um, in pounds at the moment, I will just get you euro price. It's 90. Uh, oh, sorry. Bear with me one second. I'll make sure I get the right price for you. Um, so, yeah, as Paul mentioned, it is actually subscription billing. Um, but the prices start at up to 100 users. It's uh, 1 euro 36 cents. Um, and then once you've gone past 100 euros, there's price breaks. Um, 100 users, sorry. Um, so the next um, price plus 100 users is 1 euro and 17 cents. Okay, great. That gives us an impression of the pricing. So, okay. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. So I'm... Um, Looking at you guys here, any questions? Okay. So, as you heard, they are open for one-on-one -on -one demos as well, so feel free to reach out to Exclaimer. We thank you a lot for this demo. And, uh, yeah, have a Thanks great day. Enough. Thanks a lot. You too. Bye for and now. You thank soon. you. Bye.